Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Lindsay. Today we're going to start our day two of optimization problems. So let's go ahead and just jump into this first problem dealing with revenue. So here we have the local club is arranging a charter flight to Hawaii. The cost of the trip is $425 each for 75 passengers with a refund of $5 per passenger um, for each passenger in excess of 75. Part A, find the number of passengers that will maximize the revenue received from the flight, and then Part B, find that maximum revenue. So let's take this information and again see what we're looking for when we're trying to maximize revenue here. Okay, so I'm going to move this down just a little bit to have some room to write. A local club is arranging a charter flight to Hawaii. The cost of the trip is $425 each for 75 passengers and a refund of five dollars per passengers for anything over 75. So let's go ahead and just make some sort of chart um, detailing this. So if I let uh, P stand for the number of people and I'll let C just be the cost per person. So P number of people. C cost. That's a P there. Per person and then we'll go ahead and we're talking about revenue we'll get to that in just a little bit but what are stand for revenue okay so again P number of people so in the first case if we have 75 people our cost is going to be four hundred twenty five dollars per person if we go to 76 now it decreases we get a refund so it decreases by five, so that it would go down to $420. So for every increase, we're going to subtract, and we can continue this if we need to, but again, what's going to happen is every time we increase by one, we decrease by five. So hopefully as you're kind of thinking about that, that might make you think of a linear relationship. For every one increase here, it's decreasing by one there. So in other words, your slope, which we can actually technically verify this by doing y2 minus y1. So I could do uh, 420 minus 425 over 76 minus 75, which would give us negative 5. But again, for every one increase in one person, it's decreasing by a cost of $5. That's our slope. Um, so we should be able to model this situation with... A linear equation okay I'll go ahead and use P and C here instead of X and Y so C is now my Y value so instead of doing Y minus Y1 here sorry about that Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1 I'm going to replace my Y's with C so it'll be C minus and I'll just pick one of these order pairs I'll just start with the first one 425 equals slope of negative 5 times now my x is going to be replaced with p and you're welcome to use x and y it doesn't necessarily matter here um, but here I have p minus 75 and then we can go ahead and distribute and put this in um, slope intercept form okay, distribute through that So C equals negative 5P plus 800. So there's our linear equation that represents this scenario here. Okay. But now let's kind of switch our gears here and think about how does this help us with our maximum revenue. We're going to find the number of passengers that would maximize revenue. Well, revenue, to find revenue... That would be cost per person times the number of people. Well, we just found an equation for C. So we can go ahead and substitute that in. Go ahead and distribute through that. P 
And so now we have a revenue equation that's written in terms of our uh, number of people. And we want to maximize this revenue. So again, we want to take the derivative of it. So I'll take the derivative. And to find our max, again, we want to do our uh, first derivative test. So set it equal to 0. And solve. Subtract over the 800 and divide by negative 10. So P equals 80. So let's go back and read exactly and make sure we're finding what we need to here. Part A, find the number of passengers that would maximize the revenue. So we did find P. P is the number of people. Um, so part A, this would be 80 people. Or 80 passengers, I would like to say that. Part A. And now we want to find part B, which is find the maximum revenue. So in order to find the maximum revenue, we need to um, use our revenue equation here and find R. So we can plug in 80 for our equation here. So this is part B. I'll just go ahead and write that down here. So R equals, and again, I'm going to replace 80 with P there. And if we plug that in our calculator, we should get a maximum revenue value of 32. Okay, so let's go on ahead and move on to our second example here. This one says we have a rectangle, has vertices um, on, that should be on, the x-axis, the y-axis, the origin, and the graph of y equals 4 minus x squared. Find the maximum possible area for such a rectangle. So let's go ahead and draw this. We're going to have a coordinate plane here. So the rectangle has vertices on the x-axis, the y-axis, the origin, and the graph of 4 minus x squared. Well, let's first talk about what this would be, because we know where the x, y axis is in the origin, but where would this 4 minus x squared be? Well, we can pull up our calculator and graph this, so why don't you go ahead and pause the video if you haven't done this. Um, please take a moment and graph it. If you don't have your calculator, you can graph it by hand by making a table, but take a few minutes and go ahead and graph that. Okay, so hopefully you know it was a parabola before you even um, graphed it because you had x squared in there. Um, but I went ahead and plugged that in my calculator and you can see, um, verify with your table feature too, that has, um, um, x intercepts at 2 and negative 2. And now we're going to actually uh, complete a rectangle here because it has vertices not only on this parabola, but it also has it on the x-axis, the y-axis, and the origin. So if I start on the origin, and then I go over to the x-axis, oops, I apologize, not necessarily there. I go over to somewhere on the x and y-axis. We don't necessarily know if it hits right at those points, but it could. We do know it actually hits, however, on that graph. So I just went ahead and completed that. That would be one of my rectangles. So we know what this order pair is, 0, 0. And we know a few details about some of these other ones, but specifically we know something about that order pair. Okay. So if we have an x value here, don't know exactly what that is, but we do know our y value has to be on this graph. So our y value is going to be equal to 4 minus x squared. So we have an order pair there, and we know we're talking about area of our rectangle, which we know is base time height, length times width. Um, well, we have one dimension as x, and the other dimension is our y value, which is 4 minus x squared. So now we have a formula for our area, distribute through. And again, we're trying to find the maximum, so take the derivative, set it equal to zero for our first derivative test. Continue that 
over here. So 4 thirds equals x squared. Square root both sides. So we get plus or minus. So that would be plus or minus 2 over root 3 equals x. And we can clean that up just a little bit. We could also just leave it as plus or minus square root 4 over 3. I'm not terribly concerned about that. If you rationalized here, it would be plus or minus um, 2 root 3 over 3. Again, I'm actually okay with all three of those. Okay, so uh, something that I actually didn't really discuss in the first problem, but we, we do need to actually address it, and I'll go back to that first problem as well. But when we do the first derivative test, we should be checking to see if these are max and mins. However, with optimization, we also have to think about, okay, we are maximizing possible area, so we do have restrictions on our domain here. So when we talk about our restrictions on our domain, we're actually going to be taking off the negative value and only really working with the positive value because we will not have a negative area. So the lowest value we will have is zero, and then we'd only check our critical number of, you could either use root four over three, it doesn't, again, whichever one of these you wanna use is fine. And then we wanna check those values from there, the positive values. So we don't really wanna go past zero. Um, so same idea when you talked about when we talk about it up here should have actually verified that this was a maximum by doing our test as well with our value of 80 but again we can't have anything below zero so when you plug those in the first derivative test here you should have got a positive and a negative and yes that is showing you that that is a maximum so go ahead and take the time with this next problem and verify um, that it is going to be a maximum and then I would like you to, to then find the maximum area. Okay, so it is a maximum. Um, in order to actually find the max area though, we did need to find um, our y value. So the first thing that I did is use y equals four minus x squared, substituted this in to get a y value of eight thirds and then took your x times your y, so again, that's your base times height or length times width, your x times your y here. And then root square root of 4 thirds times 8 over 3. And again, if you rationalize, um, I, I'm not terribly picky at this point in time with that. So either one of these answers would be fine, but that would be units squared. Okay. All right, so this completes the first two problems um, for optimization day two. Please continue on um, with the second video for uh, the optimization problems for day two.